Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Vikings Now. Look who has graced us with his presence. <laughs> he has been working so hard, so diligently that he didn't have time for the podcast, but Pierre lured him in, got him here. Ahmad Hicks, Pierre Newsham, I'm Jim Rich. By the way, to the commenters, we know we're not NFL coaches. We know we've not played the game at that level. And people are upset because last week we were nitpicking Right? And they're going like, look at their record. Look at their record. We're trying to take this team to a Super Bowl caliber level. We're trying to point out deficiencies, at least I am, to get this group to give us a shot at a Super Bowl. We haven't been to one since Chuck Foreman, for goodness sakes. That, so I don't we I know wrong. we didn't play the game, but we're here. We talk to the players, talks a ton to the players, listens to the coaches. Wait, yeah, we've all been on the what, coaches. What were they you. saying? You know I don't read this. What was happening? Well, in they were ripping you. They're they ripping, ripping me? Saying all that, right. You, you know, you belong in Medford, Oregon, is what one said. <laughs> Medford, Oregon. <laughs> yes. Interesting. It's actually a nice spot. I've never, spot, spot, I've never been to Medford. No, I've well, never been there. I, I, I did start is. in Grand Junction, Colorado, though. That was my first yeah, well, TV they, gig. Yeah. Some of them wanted to send you back there. Well, you know, I have a recurring nightmare about that, so maybe that will happen, actually. All right, so let's get into the game. Vikings win but again there's plenty for us to nitpick about Ahmad yeah <laughs> I mean look a win is a win in the National Football League no win is easy to come by in the National Football League but the Vikings have some things to clean up some things to worry about Stefan Gilmore injured his hamstring in the second quarter he could have came back in the game if he cannot go that's going to be problematic for this Vikings defense we all know how that secondary was atrocious last year Fabian Moreau came in had two defensive pass interference penalties and gave and up a touchdown, touchdown on one drive so it's like they attacked him as soon as he got in the game so that's one area of concern offensively though super proud of Sam Darnold and what he's been able to accomplish I told Pierre he's just poised under pressure uh, he at each week it seems like this team needs a drive late in the game and he just delivers you know whether that's the third quarter or fourth quarter so he's been playing out of his mind so a good team win but I think what you, what we saw today is what you'll probably see the next five weeks of the season every game is going to be close it's all going to come down to the wire good clean football today from Sam Darnold that's certainly going to help your cause when you're trying to make a postseason push like the Vikings are doing right now but before we get into the details I, I just want to point out this year's team, even though they haven't played their best football at times, they do stand at 10 and 2. Right. This year's team feels different than the team from two years ago. Yeah, the 13 yeah, and 4. One. Yeah, the 13 and 4 team where it seemed like they were the, luck, they were playing with a horseshoe up there, you know what, you know, at times two years ago. This year's team feels a little bit different. It feels like a team that is built, uh, built to absorb you know, adversity. And I think this is a team that faced adversity today and was able to overcome playing good complimentary football and didn't just get quote unquote lucky like that team two years ago could have been. So I think there's more substance to this year's team. If you're thinking that, yeah, they're 10 and two, but are they really that good? Like we were talking about last week, I think there's more substance to this year's team than the one two years ago. Yeah, think, yes. because now they're seven and one in one score games. But as you said, there seems to be more meat on the bone to this team. Mm -hmm. This defense seems legit. That defense two years ago uh, would just come up with a big play. At it's the, really bad. <laughs> really bad. At, at the most opportune time, an mm -hmm. interception, a fumble, something to save the day while their opponent was going up and lucky. down the field. Yeah, they were And then lucky. all of a sudden at the end, or the offense, they'd get the Buffalo game where yeah, they had right. the ridiculous <laughs> catch <laughs> by yeah. Jefferson, had that ridiculous catch on fourth down to keep it going. So this one seems like there's more – meat on the bone of this club like this offense seems uh, that offense was great this offense seems great this defense though seems light years ahead of that one two years ago it because it is I mean Ed Donatel got fired right after the season because his defense was that bad and if Kevin O'Connell had the courage to fire him during the season they maybe beat the New York Giants in the first round of the playoffs so yes like you said more meat on the bone for this team because they are deeper depth wise especially when you talk about defense in that front seven like Dallas Turner was your first round draft pick like well first second pick in the first round this past season and he's barely playing that's right. because Andrew Van Ginkle and Jonathan Grenard and Pat Jones the second have been playing out of their mind I think between those three players you, you have 26 sacks and so yes that's the biggest difference from two years ago two years ago they got bailed out by a lot of situations Patrick Peterson coming up clutch with the suck whereas I mean with, with the interception sorry uh, whereas now 
they're sucking the life out of the offense on the other side where they're like, you know what? We can get after you with our front seven. We can stop you with our back four. And kind of like Pierre said in their postgame show, like this defense has all the right tools to be successful and to be a really good team. And Brian Flores is just putting them in the right spots right now. Yeah, you, you look at that and you look at the way Sam Darnold has responded two weeks in a row now when this team absolutely needed the quote-unquote drive to seal it in the overtime last week after the defense got the three and out. Grenard had the big sack that set him up for a quick flip against the Bears. He drove him down the field. I mean, he mm -hmm. threw six for six on that drive, 90 yards, mm -hmm. got them in position to win the game with a field goal. Mission accomplished. Today, same scenario. We're looking at three minutes to go. They're starting at their own 30. He's got to get them in the end zone. Field goal doesn't really do it for them. I mean, they could do the onside kick and all that happy stuff. But get it done. Get the lead and take it. And he's done it. And today was his greatest comeback of his NFL career. He was never been down in a game by this many points and came back to win. So you're seeing growth in Darnold because Absolutely. we've harped on him, although I did say sign him after week four that you'd have you an insurance yes. you, policy. You said sign him after week two is what you were saying. Yes. Yeah, you were almost right. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you. I think in, if you want to look at where a quarterback grows and matures the most, it's in that feet to the fire moment like he had in the fourth quarter today, like he had in overtime last week, and he has gotten the job done. That absolutely speaks volumes to the growth of Sam Darnold in his game and the the coaching that that Kevin O'Connell has done has done with Sam Darnold this season. I think Sam Darnold has really proven that he's not just your bridge serviceable, you know, kind of type quarterback that keeps you afloat. Mm -hmm. He's showing that it's not just about keeping you afloat. I can get the job done. Yep. I can be a guy that the team leans on mm -hmm. when the, we need to have that game-winning drive and come up big in the clutch. That's happened now two weeks in a row. It's been three weeks in a row since he since he's thrown an interception. He hasn't thrown an interception since the Jacksonville Jaguars game. That was a disaster of a game for him. But since then, he's played darn near perfect football, and he deserves to have all the credit in the world. Yeah, congratulations, Sam Darnold. Says for playing a so lot well. when you have someone that believes in you. And for the first five to six years, yeah. no one really believed in Sam Darnold outside of his parents, maybe, and his agent who wanted to keep getting paid. I don't know. Paid. I heard yeah. mom was kind of, <laughs> mom was kind of worried. You know, and so and that's one thing that the guys in the locker room talk about. I talked to Jordan Addison last week, and I asked him, I said, yo, you've been the number one receiver your entire life going back to high school, to college. How do you deal with not getting the football on this level? He was like, you just got to stay confident, remain confident, and keep getting open and keep doing your job. He was like, they see the tape. They know I'm getting open, so they'll make a concerted effort to get me the football. And he was like, everyone inside these four walls does a great job of instilling confidence within one another. And I think that's what you're seeing from Sam Darnold, especially as of late. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? That was our big question early in the year is with this dynamic offense, with Jefferson, with Addison, with Aaron Jones, all proven commodities in the National Football League and Hawkinson, you can mm -hmm. throw him in there as well. How does Darnold go into that huddle and those players look at him and they go, he's, he's going to make the right decision. Make, you know? a, make a couple of throws, make a couple of plays, right. get the guys to buy in and believe in you. And I think he's done that all throughout the season because in that Jacksonville game directly following it, we asked Aaron Jones, what do you say to a quarterback that throws three interceptions, nearly four and one gets called back? He said, nothing. Keep balling. Like, we wouldn't have all these wins without you, so keep doing what you've been doing. Like, we're going to be okay. Everyone has mistakes, and Aaron Jones will be the first one to admit that. Two fumbles today, I think five on the season, but he told our Don Mitchell directly following the game when she congratulated him on the game-winning touchdown, he f immediately brought up his fumbles. Like, this is a guy, like, his biggest critic, so I think they all know kind of what they need to do. Well, that's a, let's go down that road. Aaron Jones, uh, concern moving forward. That ball has been – Coming out quite a bit. He also had the touchdown pass that, uh, you know, a difficult catch, not like right at you where, yeah, yeah. like Pete Bursich says, if you didn't catch it and it was a, a, spear. a spear, you'd be dead right now. <laughs> it wasn't one of those, but it was one that a lot of players make in critical situations with the game on the line, and he couldn't come up with that one. The fumble that was lost today, what that – catch that he made was juggled a little bit didn't have full control mm -hmm. of it when he turned it still count still counts because he caught it and there was a football move that he made to turn and go up field and he did lose the ball but that ball was never really fully secure to begin with but I to answer your question 
Yeah, I am concerned. It's 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 a trend. Five five fumbles for Aaron Jones this season. That's a trend. That's a problem. And that's a problem for your starting running back. Now, again, we've said time and again all throughout the season that this team has been vastly different with him as their starting running back as opposed to a season ago. But five fumbles is a problem. And if you can't show that you're going to be able to hold on to the football, you got Cam Akers sitting right there behind you ready to go and carry as many times as his number is called. So Aaron Jones knows that. Mm -hmm. He understands that. Kudos to Aaron Jones for keeping his head in the game because he easily could have mentally checked out and been down on himself. He did not allow that to happen. Came up with a game-winning touchdown catch today. Just a couple plays later, like you mentioned, he could have had one a little bit earlier, but he stayed focused, stayed ready. But Aaron Jones is a veteran in this league, and he knows. He, he knows. He, uh, you talk to this guy, he's very humble. He understands the situation. He knows he's got to hang on to that football. He's not going to play off like, ah, it's not a big deal. No, it is a big deal because it could have cost you It could have cost your team the game today depending on how a couple other things could have gone. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm a little concerned. I think Ahmad said it in the postgame. Is it something I'm going to be losing sleep over right now? Probably not, but it's it's something I'm certainly paying attention to, that's for sure. Well, and it's not just us because O'Connell sat him down. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, means to. that the team thinks that this is an issue. O'Connell thinks this is an issue, and he goes, I got to send you A some message. sort of message, yep. some sort of wake-up call to let you know that this is not okay. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it kind of just, he said our, to our Don Mitchell following the game, he knew he would have to sit down for a little bit. That's just part of the beast, you know, when you're playing this type of game. Like, if you're a receiver and you drop a couple passes, coach is going to say, hey, come, come sit over here next to me, watch how it's done, get you a little bit of motivation, get a little fire underneath you, then go back out there and go catch the football. I mean, look, Aaron Jones, no one's going to be criticizing him more than he is himself when he goes home and hears his son be like, dad, why'd you fumble twice today? Or dad, why didn't you do this? Like, that's always the biggest pill well, and he's yeah. watching you right now. No, I mean, no, he's, no, he's a, he's a big fan right of this yeah, he, podcast. He, he's turning it off, and he doesn't want to see anything <laughs> about his game today. But I think we'll always be the biggest critics, like, on the outside looking in. But these guys, look, they're, they're at home probably looking at the iPad right now, going through social media, seeing everyone talk about them, you know. So it's like you got to have a tough skin, especially when you're playing running back in this league. So no – I don't think we need to press the panic button just yet. Like you said, it is a trend, though. Like Pierre said, five turnovers, that's a trend, but it's a trend that can be cleaned up. Yeah, and it also, I think, was a message by O'Connell that's, okay, we've we've sat you long enough, and to show we still got your back, he called a couple of plays, right? The one mm-hmm. touchdown that yeah. he didn't haul in and then gave him well, another he's their track best rec- He's their best receiving back. So they brought, I don't well, know if yeah. you paid attention, the final couple of drives well, in the fourth quarter. Well, there's not much there right. behind him. Exactly. I mean, Ty Chandler and Akers. It was Cam uh, Akers toting the rock towards the end of the game, getting those tough yards. But when they needed a receiving back to come in the game and make a play, like you said, they called on Aaron Jones one time, very tough catch in the back of the end zone, diving for it. If you're not a receiver, probably don't expect you to catch that because as the quarterback coach will tell you, or the head coach will say, put it on the running back's chest. Let them catch it right here. Don't make them go here, there. Like, put it right here because running backs don't have hands like wide receivers. Now, Aaron Jones is a better pass catcher than most running backs in the NFL, but that's a tough catch. Then he came back a couple of plays later, and he made that play to win the game for the Vikings. So it shows the confidence that Kevin O'Connell has in him and the confidence that he has in himself to go back out there and make that catch because sometimes when you're in a funk and dropping passes, it doesn't matter what you do. Sometimes you just can't hang on to the football. So kudos to him for bouncing back. All right. Uh, what was going on in the first half here? Not uh, much. 75 total yards of offense, the lowest total of the season against a defense that – you know, they're they're okay. Mm-hmm. They're not top five in the NFL. Yeah, well, uh, what what did you see? Why didn't this offense click early in the game? Offensive line was having trouble early in this game. There were a couple of occasions on third down with Sam Darnold go back to pass and he was sacked. It would stall the drive. Uh, just when it looked like Minnesota was starting to gain a little momentum at times in the second quarter, sack, settle for a field goal. That's kind of where it was at. If I'm not mistaken, the Vikings only had 87 total yards of offense at the 454 mark of the third quarter. <laughs> right, right. That one drive didn't uh, they get into the end zone was like with a minute 30 left in the third quarter. Couldn't establish the run at all today either. That was a problem. But, you know, five sacks on the day. For Sam Darnold, uh, we talked about it on the postgame show, Matt and I, in fairness, we haven't had a chance to really kind of look at this tape and, and see, are those coverage sacks? Are those A couple breakdowns? of them seemed like it was just 
<laughs> Coming right through. <laughs> there, there were a couple, but I also saw a couple plays, too. Uh, uh, Slow-mo on the broadcast, you look at Sam Darnold's eyes, you could tell he's going through the progressions, and he had time to throw the ball multiple times. Did take one, at least one sack in that situation. But uh, breakdown and protection up front definitely doesn't help. Start Stalls your drives. That's what was, ha- what was happening in the first half. Those sacks on third down are going to kill you. They're going to kill you, and that's what happened multiple times in the first half. And thankfully, it didn't happen as often in the second half because if it had continued, then I think we were talking about a different result today. Pierre mentioned this in the postgame show, and I'll mention it here. The the absence of Josh Oliver, uh, Josh Oliver mm-hmm. is proving to be massive right now because this is one of the best blocking tight ends in the National Football League. He's basically an extended left tackle or right tackle when you're talking about max protection. And with the thing with the Minnesota Vikings, they have a lot of deep crossing routes, a lot of deep ends and right, deep so you comebacks. Need that time. You need yeah. that time. So you're talking about three seconds that Sam Darnold has. So if you're dropping back and you're looking for Darnold, and you need about a, I mean, Jefferson, and you need about a second and a half to two, and he's double covered. All right, well, now you got another one second or two seconds to get the ball out of your hands. That's extremely difficult, especially when you have guys barreling down your, your throat, you know, and in your face when you're trying to throw the football. So I think a lot of that has to do with just play calling and a lot of long developing plays and uh, routes that the Vikings run, but also that offensive line. And they did a phenomenal job confusing Sam Darnold in the first half. They pulled a page out of Brian Flores' book because you could just tell like there was sometimes free runners like you're talking yeah. about and it shouldn't happen like that because it was only five or six guys rushing and they had more than enough to block that so things they'll clean up but it's still a new offensive line Ed Ingram inactive for the first time in his career didn't start last week at right guard it was Dalton Reisner so Dalton Reisner got a second start so you're talking about and then Cam Robinson the only the third or fourth game as a Minnesota Viking so and he was coming off the foot injury exactly. and that may be exactly. lingering there could have yeah. been issues so, there too yeah the, the offensive line will get it cleaned up hopefully all right so do you feel better about the Vikings team after today's win than you did after the OT win against the Bears because I didn't really feel that excited Uh, about the where they were coming from yes they had the three wins on the road something that hasn't happened in a long time but they weren't convincing wins against rotten teams and the point was being last week what we drove home was Mm -hmm. that you need to play better because when you get to the playoffs guess what the Bears aren't going to be there the Jaguars aren't going to be there the Titans are not going to be there and that was the point we were trying to drive home last week and people go come on they're nine and two let's go get on the bandwagon no because that's not going to get you anywhere in the postseason so we got go first, and then you weren't in on it last week, but you can chime in now how you felt after that Bears win versus how you feel today. I do feel better about the team today, and it's exactly because of what we talked about earlier in the podcast, talking about Sam Darnold proving that he can once again lead a team down the field when you're trailing by six and it's a two-minute situation. You're trying to get down the field and win the game. You were able to win the game, and it was against a better team in the Arizona Cardinals, a team that's fighting for supremacy in the NFC West. They fell a game behind behind in the division standings because of Seattle's victory today over the Jets. Um, this could be a we this could be a preview of what's to come. These two teams could face each other again in the postseason depending on how things break for the Arizona Cardinals. And I really thought that Arizona should have won that game today. I think they killed themselves when they kicked that field goal. Yeah, I, I think I, so go for it and even if you don't, you're still leaving them inside the tent. Yeah, I, and I think a lot of people are probably talking about that right now in Arizona, having that same On their kind of podcast. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think Jonathan Gannon's a really good coach. Actually, I'm a big fan of his. His team, when you saw him take over as the head coach last season, that team plays hard for him. Last year, they weren't a very good football team, but they still played hard, and that tells me something about the respect that they have for Jonathan Gannon. I think, yeah, I would agree that you probably should have gone for it on fourth down to potentially seal like the fourth game and four it was four. they were at the it? five yard line they were it was a fourth and goal from the five and they could have had an opportunity to seal the game with a touchdown it was an opportunity loss for Arizona you kick the field goal you leave the door it doesn't open. do anything you're and up they, by six yeah Big deal. yeah and I, and I I I get it and I, their defense had been playing well for the majority of the game leading up to that point but again it only takes <laughs> one drive and Sam Darnold was able to muster that and they're winning right. games. Back to the original point. Yeah. So you feel, yes, you I do feel, feel better. better. Yes, okay, I do feel I, better. I yes. sidetracked you I, with I the do, Cardinals I, talk. I, I, I feel better after today's result than I did last week against Chicago. Yes, I do. 
I, I feel good about where this team is right now because they're showing you they can win close football games. They can win one score games. Like you said earlier in this podcast, they're seven and one. But most importantly, what we didn't see two years ago was that defense being able to get that stop or get off the field in crucial situations. They have that ability to do so now, and they're winning these tight contested games. I would prefer them to win these tight battles than be blowing teams out by 20 and 30 points. Then you get into week 17 or 18 or the first round of the playoffs, and you're in a one score game, and you never had that experience. Why I also feel more comfortable in this team not just based on last week and this week because they have Sam Darnold and if you guys remember two years ago in the playoffs versus the Giants it was fourth and four and Kirk Cousins threw a three yard pa- fourth and five and he threw a three yard pass to TJ Hawkinson Sam Darnold's going to scramble for that five yards this year like he's very athletic and he doesn't get a lot of credit for that so I think offensively Kevin O'Connell has exactly what he needs a quarterback that can extend plays has a big arm can make decisive decisions and I think he's becoming more decisive with his decision making as the season is progressing and he's getting more comfortable with this offense. So yes, like Pierre said, I'm fine with this team where they are right now because they've shown more than enough to go win close games, whether it's leaning on your offense or leaning on your defense. All right, so five games to go, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's where we're sitting right now. Um, it looks like you're in the playoffs, more than likely wild card team, but you're only a game behind Detroit. Mm-hmm, but they crazy. do have the tiebreaker because they have beaten you once. So you have to beat them. You need someone else to uh, beat them besides you. And you have to run the table to get that division title. That is kind of how it's laying out right now. Are you fine going in as a wild card team? Or do you think you need that division crown if you want to make a serious run? At a Super Bowl. Well, right now, <laughs> you know, right, right, so. right now. Let me think about that for a second. I, I, I'm think, divert. <laughs> I think the answer is obvious and simple. I, I want that division crown because right now it appears that whoever wins the NFC North could have the inside track on gaining that number one seed and get yourself a bye. I know a lot of things can still happen with the Philadelphia Eagles with the way they're playing right now. They're certainly in contention for that first round bye as well. But my goal would absolutely be get in, or get into the postseason as the NFC North winner, whether that's the one seed. Or the two seed, if you don't get that first round by, at least you're playing at home. And that's certainly an advantage, an advantage I think Minnesota would want. So, uh, if, but here's the deal. If they fall to five and you go to Atlanta or Arizona or Seattle, right. you're okay. But at the same time, too, if you fall to six, you could, even if you win that game, that opening wild card game, you could be going back to Detroit. Or you could be going to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, which has never been a fun spot. That's for the Vikings. it's 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 foot on the gas. Got to win the division mentality. That's what you have to have. Look, I'm with Pierre Connor. You got to win the division. <laughs> but if they don't win the division, just align yourself to whatever seed that doesn't play Detroit in the second round. I think they'll be okay with the other six teams in the playoffs as long as they don't play Detroit. I think that's a beast that probably won't be slowed down this season unless Jared Goff slows them down. That's just how I feel about them. Or Pierre mentioned this in the postgame show, their deficiencies defensively and a lot of injuries that they've sustained in the last month of the season. But right now, um, I don't think it matters where the Vikings play in the playoffs, uh, especially with the way Kevin O'Connell is calling games, the way Sam Darnold is throwing the football, the way everyone offensively is just – if it's not Justin Jefferson, it's TJ Hawkinson. If it's not Hawkinson, it's Addison. If it's not Addison, it's Aaron Jones. That's a good trait to have right now because you know years past they were just relying on Justin Jefferson and right. then KJ Osborne would step up and maybe 13 targets at TJ Hawkinson. Now you have four to five people to spread the ball around, and it's really hard to key in on one player like Justin Jefferson to slow well, him teams down. Teams are still taking him away, though. I mean, they all see that as their key at to a success. Cost. At a cost. Oh, you're right. Them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You mm-hmm. now have those other pieces. So what do you do? You take away Jets by putting two to three people on him. Then you let T.J. Hawkinson and Jordan Addison kill you for 200 yards and Aaron Jones for another 100. That's 300 yards to three players. Like, pick your poison. It's like Justin Jefferson gets 150 or the whole team gets 300 yards. Like, that's a really good problem to have for KLC. So, you know Jefferson. You talk with him in the locker room and see him uh, on occasion. What how is he handling this? Cool. Because he's got the contract now. He's got the money. I think if this was last year, and you were going into a situation where you're trying to negotiate a life-changing contract and you have four straight weeks under 100 yards receiving, you'd be like, He's He's (laughs) handling it well because they're winning. And that's a big difference. If you're losing it. And he's got 
six Brinks right. trucks in the driveway. Like that he's too. got a call on the way home and says, hey, can we move a couple of those armored cars? I'm trying to get into the garage. Well, cash will never be enough for him because he's chasing greatness. He's chasing that gold jacket and to be the game's yeah, but best. But everybody, and, and I would be the same way too. For sure. Right? If I needed incentives to get me that kind of payday and I'm coming up short 99 today, you're like, hey, uh, we got to take care of this. Well, too. He, he said it after the game. He hates 99 yard games because he wants that stat of having 100 yard plus games. But mm-hmm. no, when I talk to Jets in the locker room, he's fine. He's humble always. The only game. And that you he, think it's sincere? I do think it's sincere. Of every wide receiver has a little diva in them where they want the ball. But how bad do you look when you're complaining about not getting the football and your team is winning games, winning three games in a row? You see they got on the ball today. They won their fourth game in a row. I just think with Justin Jefferson, if they're losing, it's a bigger deal. But while they're winning, he's kind of like, all right, it is what it is. But don't don't be surprised if he's not having a conversation with KLC. Like, look, I know they're doubling me, but give me the ball. Like, put me in motion, do something. Like, he's a baller. Like, so, no, he's fine. The only game that he really didn't want to talk was um, after that Jacksonville game. Uh, I went up to him like I normally do. And I'm like, yo, what's up? You want to talk? Like, now or later? And he's like, nah, not today. And I'm like, all right. But then the moment after that, we started having a conversation about life outside of football. So he's still feeling good right now. But, you know, he's a competitor. So he wants the ball, but he's not going to go storm up to KLC's office, you know, like after a four-catch performance and they won and be like, throw me the ball. Like that just kind of looks like uh, Devontae Adams last year with the Raiders when he was complaining and they were winning. And it was not a good look.